We are reminded repeatedly by the followers of Muhammad of the immense contributions that the Muhammadan Muslims have given to humanity, that this was because Muhammad and his Quran instructed them to do so. What are the facts? Islamists and Muhammadan Muslims invariably quote the following and similar verses in the Quran to perpetuate the myth that Islam encourages all branches of knowledge, of sciences, philosophy, medicine, arts, etc. They deliberately and very understandably ignore the fact that Muhammad, his tribe and the Arabs of the Hejaz especially, were among the most uncivilized, generally illiterate and ignorant people in that part of the world, although surrounded by many of the oldest and greatest civilizations. Al-Zumar 39.9 Say, are those equal, those who know, ya'lamuna, and those who do not know, la ya'lamuna? It is those who are endued with understanding that receive admonition. The knowledge, ilm, that is alluded to in the verse above, as well as in those in the ahadith, refers to religious knowledge only, and not the branches of knowledges of the sciences, philosophy, medicine, arts, etc. Since all of the latter contradict the traditions, especially pertaining to the creation and other natural items mentioned in the Quran, Muhammadan orthodoxy does not encourage unrestricted intellectual inquiry, since it is deemed dangerous to the faith of the believer. The best knowledge that is accepted by the tradition is the one that is helpful for the practice of religion and only religion. Ibn Khaldun, the historian and philosopher, a true Muhammadan Muslim, born in Tunisia in 1332, reminds us that the Arabs did not play a great part in the development of Islamic science. It is strange, he said, that most of the learned among the Muslims who have excelled in the religious or intellectual sciences are not Arabs. Even those with rare exceptions, and even those savants who claimed Arabian descent, spoke a foreign language, grew up in a foreign land, and studied under foreign masters. Al-Tirmidhi Hadith 257, narrated by Abdullah ibn Amr. Allah's Messenger happened to pass by two groups of Muslims in the mosque, and he said, Both of them are good, but one is superior to the other. One group is supplicating Allah and praying Him. So far as those who are acquiring the understanding of religion and its knowledge, ilm, and are busy in teaching the ignorant, they are superior. Verily, I have been sent as a teacher of religion. Al-Tirmidhi Hadith 259, narrated by Anas ibn Malik. Allah Messenger said, Do you know who is most generous? They said, Allah and His Messenger know best. Whereupon he said, Allah is the most generous, then I am most generous to mankind, and the most generous people after me would be those who will acquire knowledge, ilm of religion, and then disseminate it. Muhammad makes it clear that the knowledge he is alluding to is knowledge of religion only. Al-Tirmidhi Hadith 279, narrated by Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, Allah Messenger said to me, Acquire the knowledge, ilm, and impart it to the people. Acquire the knowledge ilm of fara'id, laws of inheritance, and teach it to the people. Learn the Qur'an and teach it to the people. Al-Tirmidhi 6111, narrated by Anas ibn Malik. The Prophet said, The most compassionate member of my people towards my people is Abu Bakr. The one who knows best how to recite the Qur'an is Ubay ibn Ka'b. And the one who has most knowledge, ilm, about what is lawful and what is prohibited is Mu'ad ibn Jabal. Knowledge in this instance, as in all of the above, has nothing to do with science or literature, but only with the information regarding religious beliefs, since all these men were memorizers of the Quran. Sunan Abu Dawood Hadith 2879 narrated by Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As. The Prophet said, knowledge, ilm, has three categories. Anything else is extra, a precise verse, or an established sunnah practice, or a firm obligatory duty. All the above, knowledge, elm, pertain only to religious knowledge. Sahih al-Bukhari hadith 1.75 narrated by Ibn Abbas. Once the Prophet embraced me and said, O oh Allah, bestow on him the knowledge, elm, of the book, Quran. Sahih al-Bukhari hadith 1.98 narrated by Abu Huraira. 
Omar ibn al-Aziz wrote to Abu Bakr bin Hazm, Look for the knowledge of hadith and get it written, as I'm afraid that religious knowledge, the Rusul ilm, will vanish and the religious learned men, ulama, will pass away, die. Do not accept anything save the hadiths of the Prophet. Circulate knowledge, ilm, and teach the ignorant, for knowledge, ilm, does not vanish except when it is kept secretly to oneself. There are hundreds more of the same that confirm the fact that ilm, knowledge in the Qur'an, refers invariably to the sciences of the Qur'an and hadiths, that is, to religious knowledge only. It is very important to point out to our listeners that almost all those who excelled in the non-religious sciences under the umbrella of Muhammadan Islam were free, thinking, and secular men who broke away from the intellectual chains that bind the absolute majority of the Muhammadans to the dark ages of Muhammad, 7th century Arabia. Many of them were murdered, burnt, imprisoned, or exiled. Neither the Muhammadans, for obvious reasons, nor the politically correct in academia and the media make the world aware of these facts. Nothing of value can ever grow under the oppressive and grave shadow of fundamentalist Muhammadan Islam. That is why, in the last 700 years of human history, not even a handful of the hundreds of millions of the followers of Muhammad have contributed anything of value to the advancement of human civilization in any worthy field. That is why also that in the 21st century, the most backward, least intellectually productive people in any and all branches of human knowledge are among the 1.3 billion followers of Muhammad. Ladies and gentlemen, please be aware that the very best example of the most perfect fundamentalist Muhammad and Muslim state was that of the Taliban in Afghanistan, a state of perpetual terror, ignorance, fear, stupidity, irrationality, injustice, immorality, and most assuredly, ungodly. Reality and facts are the best at demonstrating the veracity of what we recite.